Hi everybody, welcome to GT Coding. I had designed this pricing table from scratch recently and uh, I have combined all the videos in the playlist into a single video. But if you want to watch the videos individually in the playlist, then you can find the link of the playlist in the description of this video. Now this pricing table was designed in Figma and then we converted it to a real web page using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So I have also added the link of the Figma file and also the source code in the description of this video. So let's get started. In this video, we will start designing a pricing table for our website. So this is how it is going to look. We can see that we have these three different plans for our service. And we have the names of the plans. We have the price, the features and all displayed over here. And we also have these choose plan buttons over here. And this plan over here in the center is considered the best value plan. So here we can see it says best value. And we also have a different styling for this plan. And uh, on the top we can see we have this switch and we can choose between monthly and yearly. Now if I click on this switch, we can see that it changes to yearly and the prices of the plans also change. So we can click on it once more and it changes back to monthly. So in this way we can check the monthly and the yearly prices of the plans. The first thing we'll do is we will design everything using Figma and then we'll convert it to a real web page using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. All right, so here I have opened Figma. So let's start by creating a new file. So I'll just click on new file over here and we just want a blank canvas. So I'll just click on create file and I'll just rename this to pricing table. All right, let's create a new frame. So I'll just click on this button called frame and uh, let's create a frame over here i'll just change the width and the height to 1366 and 768 this is the size that i want to target now before starting with our design let's choose the colors that we need for this design and we'll create a simple color palette for our design so i'll just duplicate this frame by pressing alt and dragging this to the top so we have this frame over here for the colors so i'll just quickly change this to colors and i'll change the other one to pricing table all right in the colors we will add uh, a couple of colors so let's click on this uh, shape tool and we'll select the rectangle and i'll just create a square over here the first color that we need is complete white color so I'll just select the white color from here and uh, we'll also add a little bit of border radius and we'll also add a box shadow so for that I'll just go over here to effects and click on this plus icon and we'll just change some values over here Right, so now let's duplicate this so I'll just press alt and drag it over here to the right and the next color that we're going to have is 0 to 3047 and let's drag both of these once more and the next color that we're going to have is 06D6A0 and the last color that we're going to have in our design is FFD166 Alright, so these are the colors that we're going to be using in our design. So I'll just bring it to the center. Now if you want to choose colors for your website, then you can go to this website called coolers.co. So this website right here is a great tool for getting color schemes for our website. So you can just click on start the generator and you'll be presented with this color scheme over here. You can just press space and you will have different color schemes you can lock any of these colors over here so i'll just lock this color and then press space and uh, you will get different colors but uh, this color will be locked over here so in this way you can choose color schemes for your website or you can even go to this tab called explore and here you can find all the trending color palettes that are being used so you can select any of these colors from here just click on any of these colors and it will be copied to the clipboard and then you can just copy and paste that to your Figma file. 
So this is an easy way to select colors for your design. Right now that we have the colors, let's go ahead and start with the design. The first thing we need to have is a heading. So let's click on this text button and uh, let's create a text over here. So the text we need to have is please choose a plan below. Now let's set the size of the font to 24 pixels. So I'll just go over here to the right and uh, change this to 24. And uh, we will use a font called Poppins. So if you don't have this font, you can download this from fonts.google.com. And I'll select the font weight to bold. So this is going to be our heading. I'll just place it here for now. Now the next thing we need to have is a switch. So let's select this rectangle from here and uh, let's create a switch over here. Now for the switch we'll just set a height of maybe 56 pixels. We'll set the width to I think 280 pixels. And let's also set the border radius to 24 pixels so that we have rounded corners. And the background color of our switch should have this dark color right here. So let's select that. So here we can see we have the color already being displayed over here, the document colors. So I'll just select this color right here. Right now in the switch we need to have one more rectangle. So let me just duplicate this. So I'll just press Alt and drag it down over here. And for this one we need to have a different color. So I'll just go over here to fill and select this color right here. And let's bring it over here to the top and let's reduce the height and we'll also decrease the width over here or right, so I think that looks fine right now let's add the text monthly and yearly over here so we can just duplicate this text so press alt and drag this over here and I'll just change this to monthly and we'll change the font size to 18 pixels and we'll also change the bold to regular and uh, let's place this over here to the top now here you can see that it is behind the rectangle so let's drag it to the top and uh, let's place it in the center I think we can decrease the width a little bit All right now let's change the color of the text to white so I'll just select a white color from here Right now let's duplicate this once more and bring it to the right and here we will just type yearly. So that's basically the switch for our design. Now let's select these elements from here and uh, we'll just right click over here and click on group selection or you can even press ctrl G. So now this is a group. Let's go over here and change the label to switch and uh, let's change the distance between these to let's say maybe 36 pixels and uh, let's select both of these together and uh, we'll bring it to the center so I'll just drag it over here and you'll get an indicator so here we can see that it is in the center right now the next thing is the pricing table so let's create a rectangle so I'll just select rectangle and uh, just create a random rectangle over here We'll change the height and the width later. Now for this table we need to have a different color. So I don't think we have added the color over here. So let's add one more color over here. I'll just bring this up and uh, copy this over here. And the color code is F1 F A double E. Right, so let's add this color to our table. So I'll just select this and uh, select the color from here. I think this is the color. Right, so now let's quickly create all the elements and uh, later we will style it properly. So first we need to have the name of the plan. So I'll just duplicate this by pressing Alt and dragging it down over here. And I'll also move it above the rectangle. Right now the plan is called basic and uh, then we need to have the price. So I'll just duplicate it once more and the price is gonna be $49 and then we have another text called per month or per year 
so I'll just duplicate this and uh, here I'll just type per month and then we have some description of the plan so here we'll just type this plan is the best for individuals who are getting started and then we have the features so we'll just duplicate it once more and the features are 15 files and 10 GB storage and email support alright now let's style everything correctly so first of all we have this heading I think 24 pixels is looking good for this so we'll just keep it as it is and for the price we will change the font size to 54 pixels and for per month we will just change the font size to 16 pixels and we'll also remove the bold to regular and then for the description we will just change this to regular and also the font size we'll set it to 15 pixels or let's just change this to 14 pixels and for the features we will set the font size to 15 pixels and change this to regular and for the features we will set a line height so that we will have more space between these lines so this is the line height over here so I'll just set the line height to 45 pixels right now let's fix the width of our table so we'll just set the width to 285 pixels and we'll have a padding of left and right to 32 pixels now if you want to know the space between this element and the border of this element you have to press alt and hover over this so here we can see it says 37 pixels so let's click on the left arrow and bring it down to 32 pixels we'll do the same with the pricing and also the description over here so here you can see it is 32 pixels and we also need to change the width over here to the right so let's bring it down to 32 pixels so here on the right it says uh, 23 pixels now to reduce the size of this you can just press ctrl and press the left arrow right so now we have 32 pixels on the right and on the left and I think we can just decrease the size of this font a little bit more so I'll just change this to 13 pixels All right that looks fine now the next thing we'll do is uh, for each of these features we will have a check icon here on the left so for that I'll just use a plugin in Figma so I'll just right click over here and go to plugins and open this plugin called Iconify now if you don't have this plugin installed in Figma you can go over here to the main page and go to community and then uh, you can go over here to plugins and all the plugins will be displayed over here you can just search for the plugin and click on install and the plugin will be installed right so let's go over here and search for check so we'll just use this icon right here so I'll just drag it over here and we'll just close this right so here we will just set it to match with these features and I'll just duplicate it for the other features right now we'll just change the color of this icon so I'll just press shift and select all of these and let's go over here and uh, let's change the color to this green color right here right now the last thing we need to have in this table is a button before that I'll just select all of these and uh, move it to the right so that we have 32 pixels of padding on the left all right now let's make this a little bigger and let's add the button so I'll just select a rectangle and uh, we'll just set the border radius to 24 pixels and we'll set the color to this dark color right here and we'll just increase the height a little bit so I think 56 pixels would be great so let's bring it over here with 32 pixels on the left and we'll also increase the width a little bit 
so that we have 32 pixels on the right as well. All right, now let's add the text. So I'll just copy this and bring it over here and bring it to the top and change the color of the text to white. And we'll just decrease the font size a little bit. So I think 16 pixels. I think that's too small. So we'll just go with 20 pixels. All right, that looks fine. So let's bring it to the center. And uh, let's select both of these and uh, group them by pressing Ctrl G. And uh, we'll just change the name to button. And we'll change the text to choose plan. I think we can decrease the font size a little bit. So we'll just set it to 18 pixels. Alright, that's fine. Right now let's position this a little bit better. So we'll just make sure that this is in the center. And for the description, we'll just move it to the top a little bit. And uh, we'll just move all of these to the top. And also the button to the top a little bit. Right on the top, we have a padding of 32 pixels. So even for the bottom, we will have a padding of 32 pixels. So let's just reduce the height a little bit. Right now we have 32 pixels on the bottom and on the top. I also want to have a little bit of a wavy shape over here to make it look a little bit better. So for that, we'll just select the pen tool from here and we'll just draw some shapes over here. So I'll just select from here and go over here and drag it and then go over here and uh, bring it down here down here and uh, over here and then click on done so we have the shape right here let's go ahead and uh, remove the stroke from here and we'll just add a fill color we'll just set it to the black color and we'll set the opacity to 5% and we'll bring it all the way to the bottom and we'll bring the rectangle to the bottom of the shape. Right now we can see we have the shape and everything is looking all right. You can go ahead and edit the shape if you want. So you can just double click over here and you can change these dots over here and uh, you can edit it in this way and then click on done. Right now let's select all of these and uh, let's group it. So press Ctrl G and we'll change the label to basic plan. Right now the business plan which is on the last has the same design as this plan right here. So let's duplicate this and we'll just change the name to business plan. Let's change the details over here. So for basic we'll just type business and uh, the price will be 149 and we'll just move this a little bit to the right and for the description we'll just type this plan is the best for large businesses and for the features we we'll just type some features over here unlimited files unlimited storage and phone support Right, we have both the plans over here. Now the last thing we need to have is the best value plan over here. So it is also almost the same design. So I'll just duplicate this. The first thing we need to have is we'll change the background color of this rectangle. And we'll change it to this dark color right here. And we'll also change the border radius to 24 pixels. Now let's change the color of this button. So I'll just change the background color to this yellow color right here and the text color will change to black and we'll change all this text color to white so I'm just pressing shift and selecting all of these and I'll just click over here and select the white color and for the shape we will just give a different opacity because we cannot see it clearly over here 
so I'll just change this to 15% and let's change some of the details over here so the name of the plan we will keep it as professional and the pricing will be $99 and we'll just move it a little bit to the left let's change the description over here and we will also change some of these features over here all right now we need to have best value displayed over here on the top so let's create one more rectangle and change the height to match with this table and we'll set the border radius of the top left and the top right to 24 pixels so you can click on this button called independent corners and uh, here I will just type 24 and 24 and we'll set a different color for this so I'll just type EF476F now this is the professional plan so let's change the name to professional and this rectangle should be inside this right in this we need to have a text so I'll just bring this over here and uh, bring it to the top so here I will just type best value and we'll just set the font size to 16 pixels and bring it to the center and for this we will just remove the border radius from the top right now we need to bring all of these down a little bit so I'll just select all of these and we'll have 32 pixels of spacing at the top and for this price we will set a higher font size we'll set it to 68 pixels and I think we need to bring all of this a little bit to the bottom all right now let's change the height of this so here we have 32 pixels on the bottom and we'll also bring the shape to the bottom and for the shape we need to have border radius at the bottom so I'll just double click on the shape and select both of these dots from here and uh, here I will just type 24 so now we have 24 pixels of border radius right now all of this is inside a group so now let's bring all of this together so I'll just stick it to the right and uh, stick this to the left over here alright I think that's it for the pricing table design so let's select all of these and uh, bring it to the center so that's basically it for the design in our Figma file so here I've created this folder called pricing table and uh, in this we will create all the files so let's right click over here and open with code this is the code editor that I'm going to be using in this project it is called Visual Studio Code you can just search for Visual Studio Code on Google and you can download it for free and some extensions that I'm using for this project are uh, one is called Live Server so it can be used to display the result on the browser as soon as we save our project and the other extension that I'm using is called Prettier so whenever you save your code it will uh, add the correct indentation to your code so these are basically the two extensions that I'm going to be using in VS Code so let's go ahead and uh, start by creating our uh, necessary files so you can go ahead and click on this button called new file or you can just press ctrl shift P and you'll get these options over here and uh, I have new file over here so I'll just press enter and here I will just type index.html so this is the HTML file now we also need a file for the CSS so I will just press ctrl shift P enter and style.css and one more file for the JavaScript so we'll just name it main.js and we'll also create a folder for all the images so I'll just click on this button called new folder and we'll just type images so all our files and folders have been created now let's go to index.html and uh, in VS Code we have the extension called Emmet already installed so you can just type exclamation and press tab and you'll get this basic HTML5 boilerplate code so for the title I'll just type GT coding and uh, here we will link our style.css file so I'll just type link and press tab 
and in the href i'll just type style.css and we'll also add the link of the javascript file so here just before the body ends i'll just type script colon src and uh, press tab and here i will just type main.js so we have linked our javascript and css files now we will add the link of the font so let's go back to our figma file and uh, let's see which is the font that is being used over here so let's click on this and uh, we can see the font that is being used is called poppins and we need to get the bold and the regular versions so let's go back to our uh, browser and uh, here just go to fonts.google.com and just search for poppins so here's the font that we need i'll just click on that and uh, we need the regular so this is the regular just click on select the style and uh, we also need the bold so this is the bold version let's click on select the style so here we can see poppins regular and bold have been selected and we can add this to our html so just go to link and copy this link from here and paste it in our html code so i'll just paste it just after the title all right so we have added the link of our font now let's go to our css and uh, let's create some variables for our colors now we'll create variables inside root so i'll just type colon root and in this we will add the css variables so let's go back to our figma file and let's scroll up over here and uh, these are the colors that we need and the first color is the white color so we don't need to add it because we can directly type white in css and we'll add this color over here so let's copy this code from here now to create a variable you have to type hyphen hyphen and then the variable name now for this we'll just call it dark blue so I'll just type dark blue and uh, we'll type hash and the color that we just copied so we had the first color now the next color we will just name it green so I'll just copy this code from here and we'll type hyphen green and we'll just type hash and paste the color over here and then the color that we have is yellow so I'll just copy this and uh, hyphen hyphen yellow and then we have this light color over here so I'll just copy this I'll just type light color and we also have one more color which is this pink color so I'll just double click over here and copy this and uh, we'll just type pink over here right so we have added all the colors that we need for our design now the last thing that we'll do in this video is to export the images from figma and add it to this folder right here images so with that we'll set up everything for getting started with the code so let's go back to figma and uh, we need to export two files from here one is this check icon and then we also need this background so let's go ahead and double click over here so this is the icon now to export this image you can go to the design tab and scroll down and you'll find this uh, option called export just click on the plus icon right here and uh, then click on preview and here you can see a preview of what you're going to be exporting and then here we have the options of the file type now this is a shape so it can be created using svg so i'll just select svg now svg is a great format for images like these where you have icons or basic shapes because even if you increase the size of this uh, svg image it won't lose any quality so let's click on export so here i'm in the project let's go to images and uh, here i'll just name the file as check icon and we'll click on save so the check icon has been saved now the next thing that we need to export is this uh, shape right here so i'll just click on that and uh, let's do the same thing let's go over here to export and uh, here is the preview and uh, for this icon we have five percent opacity and for the other icon we have 15 percent opacity so we'll create two files for that so we'll just select svg and uh, export i'll just type bg shape one and we'll just select the other one and uh, let's click on export 
so let's go ahead and select SVG and we'll click on export and we'll type BG shape 2 let's go back to our VS code so here in images we can see these three SVG files so everything is ready for starting with our code now first of all we have this heading and then we have this switch so let's go back to our HTML and uh, we will start by creating a container division so we'll create a division and we'll give it a class of pricing table container so since I have Emmet installed in VS code you can directly type dot and uh, class name over here and if you press tab you will have a division with that class name alright so in this container division we will have all the other elements so first of all for the heading and for this switch we will create another division so we'll just give it a class of pricing header and in that we'll have an h2 and uh, in the h2 we will type please choose a plan below now let's open this in our browser so I have this extension called live server installed on VS code so I can directly right click over here and click on open with live server and here we can see our progress as of now we have this h2 alright so now let's create the switch now for the switch we will have a container division so this is the switch we have monthly and yearly displayed over here so let's go ahead and create a division with a class of plans switch container and for the switch we'll be using a checkbox so let's type input and for the type we will have checkbox and we'll also give it a class of plans switch you can name these classes anything you want but you have to access the same classes in the CSS when you style it alright now if you go back to our design we can see that we have this checkbox over here we can turn it on and turn it off now for monthly and yearly we will have two spans so we'll just type span and for the monthly we will have a class of monthly and we'll just type monthly over here and I'll just duplicate this line of code by pressing shift alt and down arrow and uh, for monthly we will type yearly and even here we'll type yearly right now here we can see we have this checkbox and then we have monthly and yearly now using CSS we'll just hide this checkbox and uh, we will style it exactly like this but for now let's go ahead and uh, write the HTML for the other elements alright so now the next thing we need to have are these three plans so let's go ahead and uh, create a container division for that so I'll go outside this pricing header division and we'll create one more division with a class of pricing table now in this we will have the three plans now for each of the plans we'll have a division with a class of table and in that we need to have this content and we also need to have this image right here so we'll have a container division for all this content and then we'll just add this image outside the division so we'll create a division with a class of content and the first thing we need to have is this heading so we'll have an s3 for that and we'll just type basic and the next we need to have the price so for the price we will have a container division so we'll just have a division with a class of price container and uh, in that we'll have a span and for the span we'll give it a class of price and we'll just type dollar 49 and then we need to have the text per month so for that we'll have one more span so we'll just create a span and uh, in this we'll type forward slash month so here we can see we have $49 per month now we are using span over here instead of division because uh, we need to have all of these in a single line if we have a division instead of span then 49 will be on one line and per month will be on the other line so that's why we are using span and uh, next we have the description of the plan so I'll just copy this from here and uh, for the description we will create a division with a class of description and I'll just paste the line over here so here we have the description and next we need to have the features 
Now for the features, we will have an unordered list. So let's go ahead and create a UL and we'll also give it a class of features. We'll have three list items. One is 15 files, then we have 10 GB storage and email support. So let's type that over here, 15 files. Duplicate this and uh, 10 GB storage and email support. All right, the features have been added. Now we need to add this button right here. So for the button, we will just have an anchor tag and we'll style it in a way that it looks like a button. So we'll have an anchor tag and for the href, I'll just type hash for now. And here we'll type choose plan. And for the anchor tag, we will have a class and we'll just call it btn. And now outside this content division, so this division right here, now outside that we will have the image for the background shape. So this image right here. So let's type img and uh, let's type images slash and the image was saved as bg shape one dot svg so let's select that over here now let's go back to our uh, web page and here we can see everything is uh, being displayed over here so we also have this image right here now the next plan we have is this best value plan over here so let's go ahead and uh, i'll just copy this from here so i'll just copy this whole division with a class of table and we'll paste it down here before that I will just add a comment so I'll just press control and forward slash and I'll just type end of basic plan and I'll just paste it over here now for the best value plan we need to have a different styling as well so I'll just add one more class over here I'll just type best value and we also need to have this text best value displayed over here so here I'll just have a span with a class of value and I'll just type best value over here and uh, then we have the content so I'll just change these details over here instead of basic we'll just type professional and price container we'll have $99 per month and we'll update the description so I'll just copy this from here and paste it over here and I will just update the features so unlimited files and 25 GB storage and we also have phone support and then we have the choose plan button and uh, for this we will have the other image that we exported so it is called BG shape 2 now let's add a comment over here and I will just type end of professional plan and I'll just copy this uh, basic plan once more so this is the last plan over here which is the business plan so let's just update the details so here instead of basic we will type business and uh, the price will be 149 and I'll just copy this description and paste it over here and unlimited files, unlimited storage and then we have the image which is PG shape 1 so that's basically it with the markup of our pricing table design let's go back to our web page and uh, we have all the elements over here the basic plan, the professional plan and the business plan so this is our project file we have all the HTML over here so we have everything ready in the HTML to be styled and we have also linked our style.css file over here so let's go directly to the style.css file and let's start styling our pricing table Now the first thing we will do is uh, we will set the font family so I'll just type pricing table container which is the main container division so this division right here and uh, we'll give it a font family of poppins and sans serif so here we can see we have already added the link of the font over here from google fonts and we can directly use that over here all right so here we can see the font has changed over here in our design now it'll be easier for you to follow when you have the css on the left and the design on the right so that you can clearly see what is going on 
So I just have this design over here on the right. But since our design is larger than this window size over here, I'll just zoom out a little bit. And at the end, we will just maximize it and see it in the correct size. But as of now, we will just have it zoomed out a little bit so that we can see everything clearly. Now let's go ahead and start with the switch. So let's start pricing table container, plans switch. And let's see what is the width and the height of the switch. So let's select this. And the width is 280 pixels. So let's set the width to 280 pixels. And we'll give it a background color. And for the colors, we have already set these variables over here. So let's add the dark blue color. So I'll just type var. And in parentheses, we will type hyphen hyphen dark blue. And let's also set a height. So I'll just set a height of 55 pixels. And let's set the appearance to none. Now we can see that the checkbox is not being displayed, but we have the width and the height applied over here. And we also have the background color. All right, so now let's set the border radius. So the border radius is set to 24 pixels. So let's set that over here, 24 pixels. And when we click on this, we can see that we have this outline. So let's remove that. For that, we'll just type outline none. Now we don't have the outline. And we'll also set the cursor to pointer so that when you hover over this, we have uh, the pointer. So I'll just type cursor pointer. Now we can see we have a different cursor. Now this is the plan switch, which is uh, this input right here. So this input, this is the plan switch. Now we have this division with the class of plan switch container, which contains this input as well as the monthly and the yearly text. So now let's target this and we will set a position of relative to it so that we can position the monthly and the yearly relative to this plan switch container. So let's go over here and let's type pricing table container and plans switch container. And we'll set the position to relative and we'll set the color of the text to white. So we can see that the color has changed to white. Now let's position them over here in the plan switch container. So let's type pricing table container, plan switch container. And uh, then we have the span with the class of monthly and we'll position it absolute. And we'll set the left position to 36 pixels and the top position to 18 pixels. Let me just reset the zoom and see how it looks. All right, it looks fine. Now we don't want this text to be interactable, so we don't want it to be selected over here like this. So for that, we will just set pointer events to none. Now when we hover over this, we can see that we cannot select or interact with this text. All right, now let's copy this and uh, position the yearly text so I'll just type yearly over here. And even for this, we'll set the position to absolute. And we'll set the right position to 36 pixels. And we'll set the top to 18 pixels. And it's not being displayed. So let's right click and inspect. And here we can see that yearly is displayed on the extreme right of the screen. So this plan switch container has a width of 100% of the screen because it is a division. I will simply set it to display of inline block. So I will set the display to inline block. And now we can see that it has the width of the content. So now we have monthly and yearly displayed over here. We'll also set the pointer events to none over here. All right, now let's create the shape that we have inside here. So for that, we need to have a lesser height and around half width. So I think we can double click over here and uh, let's see the height is set to 44 and the width is set to 137. Let's see how it works. Now for that shape, we will be using the before selector Now the before and the after selectors are used to add extra information to your elements. So let me show you how it works. Let's type pricing table container and we'll type plan switch colon colon before and uh, here let's type content and uh, let's type something over here 
we'll just have one two three and we can see one two three is being displayed over here I hope you can see it let's just change the color we can see one two three is being displayed over here so whatever content we have over here will be displayed at the beginning of this element now let's remove one two three from here and we'll just leave it blank and uh, we will add a shape over here now we need to have the position of the shape relative to this uh, plan switch so let's go back to plan switch and uh, let's add position relative so that we can add position absolute over here so let's type position absolute and uh, let's see the height and the width the width is 137 pixels and the height is 44 let's try it height of 44 pixels and uh, width of 137 pixels and the border radius is the same which is 24 pixels and uh, we need to set the background color to the green color that we have in our variable so we'll just type green all right now we need to position it vertically in the center so for that we'll just type top position to 50 percent and now we can see it starts from the 50 percent mark now we need to set the transform and translate y to negative 50 percent and now we can see that it is exactly in the center we'll also set a left position of 8 pixels or maybe 6 pixels alright that looks fine now this width seems to be a little bit more than we need so let me just set it to 130 pixels or maybe 120 pixels alright this looks fine and we can have different styles based on whether the checkbox is checked or not so let's type pricing table container plan switch colon checked colon colon before now what we are doing over here is that we are checking whether it is checked and if the checkbox is checked then uh, we want to add some styles to the before so if it is checked we will have the left position to something different for now I'll just type 120 pixels we'll also set a width of 100 pixels for now so let's click over here and we can see that when we click on that the checkbox is being checked and uh, we have a different position for the left and let's click on it once more and it goes back to the original position right so now we need to set the position correctly for the yearly so let's right click over here and inspect and uh, let's set the left value so here for the before I'll just add a little bit more of the left value and uh, I think this looks fine but I think that the overall width of the plan switch container is uh, more than we need so let's go back to plan switch container I think it is inside the input checkbox so here let's reduce the width a little bit and uh, maybe 250 pixels or that looks fine so we'll set the width of this uh, plan switch to 250 pixels right now for yearly we will add the left value so 144 looks fine and we'll set a width as well right a combination of 138 of left position and width of 106 pixels looks fine so let's copy these two values from here and paste them over here right now let's click on this and we can see that it switches correctly let's also add a smooth transition so for that we'll type transition and uh, we will set a transition of 0 0.5 seconds we'll set it to all the properties and uh, let's click on it once more and we can see that the transition is working all right so our switch is working as expected now we want this heading and uh, this uh, switch to be one next to the other but right now since it is an H2 it takes up the whole space here we can see that for this we have a division called pricing header so we'll set the display to flex so that all the elements are one next to the other here we'll just type pricing table container pricing uh, header and we'll set the display to flex and align items to center and justify content to center
and we'll have some margin right for the H2. So I'll type pricing table container H2 and we'll type margin right of 32 pixels and uh, let's see what is the font size. So let's select this and the font size is 24 pixels. So let's add that over here font size 24 pixels. For the plans we have this division with the class of table. So let's target that. So here we'll just type pricing table table. So here we have this division with the class of pricing table and in that we have this division with the class of table. So let's target that and uh, let's give it a background color of light color and we have to have a set width for that. So let's go over here and uh, see what is the width and it says the width is uh, 285.5. Now we may have to change the width a little bit to look good in our CSS but for now let's go with 280 pixels and let's see how it works. So we'll set a width of 280 pixels and uh, we also have a padding of 32 pixels. If we press Alt, we can see we have a spacing of 32 pixels from the sides. So let's add a padding of 32 pixels. And when we added the padding, the width changed a little bit. So I think we can decrease the width a little bit. So I'll just set the width to 260 pixels. Sometimes you have to change the values a little bit to make it look better on your real website. All right, now let's target the S3, which is inside the table. So just type pricing table s3 and let's see what is the font size for the s3 so we have a font size of 24 pixels so let's type font size 24 pixels i think we have a lot of space at the top so let's remove the margin right now let's target the price so it is inside pricing table and uh, we have a container division called price container and in that we have the price. So let's see what is the font size of the price. So we have a font size of 54 pixels. So let's type font size of 56 pixels. And we also need to set the font weight to bold. And uh, we will have a padding right of 16 pixels. And we want both of these to be centered. So let's set the display of the container division to display flex. So we'll just type pricing table price container. So we'll just type display of flex and align items to the center. Now let's target the description. So we'll just type pricing table description. And uh, let's see what is the font size of the description. So it is 13 pixels. So let's set a font size of 13 pixels. And I think it looks a little bit too small. So I'll just change it to 14 pixels or maybe 15 pixels. All right, this looks fine. Now let's target the unordered list, which is the features. So let's type pricing table and uh, we have the class of features for the unordered list. And we'll just remove these bullets from here. So we'll just type list style to none. And we'll just set a padding of zero. All right now let's target the list items inside the unordered list. So just type pricing table features li. Now we'll set a margin of 24 pixels for top and bottom and zero for left and right. Now instead of the bullets we want to have the check icon. For that we'll use the before selector. So just type pricing table features li colon colon before and uh, we'll set the content as a URL. So we'll just type URL and we'll just pass the URL of the image. So we have the check icon over here. Now we can see we have this check icon in front of all the list items. Let's also add some margin right. We'll add a margin right of 16 pixels. We want it to be centered correctly. So we'll just type margin top of 5 pixels. The margin top is not working. So let's go over here to features li. And we'll just set the display to flex and we'll just set the align items to center. All right, now we can see that it is in the center. I think uh, we'll just set the margin top to four pixels. 
All right, that looks uh, all right. Now let's target this button. So we'll just have pricing table a dot btn and for the button we will have a background color so let's see what is the background color for this button so we have the dark blue so let's type var dark blue and let's set a padding of 16 pixels for top and bottom and uh, 0 for left and right and we'll set the display to inline block and we'll set the width to 100 percent and let's set the color of the text to white and uh, let's see what is the text size so the text size is 18 pixels so let's type font size of 18 pixels and font weight to bold and we'll text align it to the center and we'll remove the underlines by typing text decoration to none and uh, we'll also have a border radius of 24 pixels and uh, we'll have a margin top of 24 pixels or maybe a little less maybe 18 pixels or 16 pixels All right now we'll style this uh, image shape that we have over here and we want to set the position of this shape relative to this container division which is uh, the table so let's go over here to the code for the table and uh, here we will type position relative All right now let's target the image shape so let's go back to index.html and uh, this is the shape and uh, we'll also add a class to this image so just type class equals table bg All right now let's target this and uh, here we will type pricing table table img dot table bg and we'll set the position to absolute and uh, we'll set the bottom to 0 and uh, the left to 0 and right to 0 and uh, we'll set the width to 100% All right now we have the image placed correctly but it is on top of the other content over here so for that we have to set a z index for the whole content so let's type pricing table and uh, table content so here we can see for inside the table we have this division with the class of content so let's set a z index of 200 and uh, since this has a position of absolute we also need to have a position of something over here so we'll just set position of relative and now we can see that the button is on top of the background and I think we have a lot of space between uh, the heading and this price so let's go to the h3 so here we'll also add a margin bottom and uh, we'll first of all start with zero and I think that looks all right all right I think that's it with the basic plan now let's move on to the best value plan so let's go over here and uh, let's target that and if you go back to the HTML we can see that we have also added a class called best value to the best value plan so let's target that over here we'll just type pricing table table dot best value so this will target the table with a class of best value and uh, first of all let's add a background color of dark blue and uh, we'll also set the color of the text to white and we also need a border radius and uh, let's see what is the border radius so double click over here and we can see the border radius is 24 pixels so let's add a border radius of 24 pixels and we also want to have a width more than the other plans so let's go over here and see what is the width of the other plans so the width is 260 pixels now for this we will have a width of let's say 280 pixels now the background image doesn't have the styles because uh, we haven't added the class that we added over here so we have added this class called table bg in uh, this first image so let's copy that and uh, paste it in the other images as well and do the same in the third image as well right now let's target this text best value so in our index.html we can see that here we have a span with a class of value so let's target that we'll just type pricing table 
table dot best value and value and we'll set the position to absolute and uh, we'll set the top value to zero left to zero and right to zero and text align it to the center and we'll have a padding of eight pixels and we'll give it a border radius of 24 pixels top left and top right and zero for the rest and we'll have a background color of pink so just have var pink and we'll also set the font weight to bold all right now for the content inside the best value plan we will have a padding top so we'll just type pricing table table dot best value content and we'll have a padding top of 32 pixels and let's see what is the font size of this plan right here so let's click over here and the font size is 68 pixels so let's go over here and uh, target that so we'll just have pricing table table best value price and font size of 68 pixels and let's see what is the color of this button and it is a yellow color so let's type pricing table table best value a.btn and uh, we'll set the background color to var yellow and the color of the text to black and I think it will look good if we have a lighter color for this description so let's type pricing table table best value description and we'll set the color to light gray and we'll also have a different color for the description in the other plans so let's go over here and we'll type color and uh, we'll just have 222 two, two. alright we have styled all the plans now the last thing we need to do is uh, position them one next to the other so I'll just maximize this let's go over here to the HTML and uh, we can see we have this uh, container division called pricing table and let's set the display of this division to flex so let's go back to the top and uh, here after the plan switch code let's type pricing table and we'll set the display to flex and now we can see everything is one next to the other and we'll also set align items to center and justify content to the center now we can see everything is in the center and we'll also add a margin top so we'll set a margin top of 32 pixels so that's basically it with the styling of our pricing table now this is our progress as of now and we can see that the design is complete but there's one more thing that we need to do which is uh, we want to change the price when uh, we go to the yearly plan and then change the price back when we go back to the monthly plan so we'll do that using javascript so let's get started right here i'm in my project so before getting started with the javascript i want to just make a small change in the css so when we hover over these buttons i want to change the background color a little bit so let's go to the css and i will just do that really quick so let's go over here and find the code for the anchor tag which is the button so this is the button for the best value plan so let's add some styles for the hover so we'll type pricing table i'll just copy this and uh, here we will just type a button column hover and let's type background and uh, let's find out the code for the yellow color so this is the code for the yellow color now in VS code you can just hover over this color and you will get this color picker now let's just go ahead and choose a lighter color from here so I'll just choose this color right here and change this back to the hex code All right we'll also add a transition so that we have a smooth animation between the colors so I'll just type transition of all to 400 milliseconds let's go back and see whether it works so here when we hover over this we can see that the color is changing we'll also add a darker color for the hover of these buttons so let's find the code for that button so it's right here pricing table a.btn so let's add a hover for that pricing table a.btn colon hover and uh, we'll set the background color 
and we'll find the code for the dark blue color so this is the hex code for the dark blue color now let's hover over this and uh, let's select a darker color from here so i'll just select this one right here and we'll also add a transition all to 400 milliseconds right let's go back and let's hover over the button and we can see that the color is changing all right now let's start with the javascript so first of all let's see what are the things we need to access in javascript so we need to access uh, these prices in javascript and then we also need to access uh, this text right here so we want to change it to per year so let's go back to our html and we will add some classes over here so that we can target them easily so for the first prize we have a class of price but we'll also add one more class we'll call it basic price and for the span for the month we will add a class and we'll just give it a class of plan duration so let me just copy this from here and uh, let's go to the next plan which is uh, the professional plan so here for the price I'll also add one more class professional price and uh, here we'll add the class plan duration and we'll do the same with the last plan which is the business plan so we'll just type business plan and we'll add the class plan duration over here and we'll also need to access the plan switch so if you go up over here we can see that we have already added this class called plan switch for this input of type checkbox so let's go to our javascript and let's start referencing all of that so we'll just type const plan switch and we'll type document dot query selector dot plans switch now since we have the class we are adding dot over here if we had an id we would just type hash instead of dot right so let's go ahead and reference all the other elements we'll just reference the basic price so I'll just type basic price document dot query selector basic price and we'll just type professional price document dot query selector professional price and then we have business price And lastly, we also need to access the plan duration. Right now, we'll add an event listener to this switch and we'll see whether it is checked or not. So, to add an event listener, we'll just type plan switch dot add event listener and we'll check for the event called change. This will tell us whether the checkbox is checked or not. And here we will add an error function so whenever the state of this plan switch changes this event will be fired and here we'll check if the plan switch is checked so we'll type plan switch dot checked and if it is checked then uh, it means that we are on the yearly plan so we have to change this text to yearly and we have to change the price of all of these so let's type basic price dot inner text equals and we'll set the price to $349 and then we have the professional price and we'll set the inner text to $499 and then we have business price dot inner text equals $799 and then we need to change the plan duration now if you take a look at the plan duration class in the index.html we can see that there are multiple plan duration classes so for each of the plans we have plan duration now here we have just accessed the first element over here now to access all the elements we have to type query selector all now we'll get all the plan durations inside this uh, constant right here now here we'll loop through all of those so we'll just type plan duration dot for each now for each of the plan duration i'll just name it p and uh, we'll create an arrow function and here we'll type p which will access each of the plan durations inside this uh, array of plan duration individually and we'll set each of the values to per year right now if the plan switch is not checked then we have to change back to the price of the monthly so let's type else and i'll just copy all of these over here and paste it down here and we'll just change all of these prices the first one is 49 
and uh, the second one is uh, 99 and the third one is 149 and we'll change this to month right now I think it should work all right so let's go back to our website and let's click on this switch and we can see that when we go to the yearly plan the prices have changed and this price hasn't changed and even the month has not changed to year so let's go back to our JavaScript and see whether we have any problems in our code before that let's go ahead and check out the inspector and let's go to console and here we have some errors cannot set property in the text of null so I think we are calling something which is not there so business price so it is showing some errors with the business price let's go back over here and see whether we have any errors and uh, let's go back to the index.html file and uh, here we have typed business plan we have to change it to business price right now it should work alright so let's click on the switch and now we can see that the prices have changed and the text has changed to per year and when we go back to the monthly plan the prices change to the monthly plans so that's basically it with the JavaScript and with that we have completed the design of our pricing table we have started all the way from scratch using Figma and we have converted it to a real web page using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Now I will leave the link of the source code in the description of this video so you can go ahead and check that. So that's it for this video. If you have any doubts you can ask in the comments below and if you like this video please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.